have existed in our society laced with diversity and complexity. I have existed knowing my desire to become a writer, but never knowing how to approach the task confidently. If I am to represent the identity of Trinidad and Tobago as a future writer, I'll need to be open and vulnerable to cultural impact. Trinidad and Tobago has endured a social strain caused by not knowing the importance of the development of nation. What we need to do is explore these issues and realize the importance of literature as it delves into the intricacies of our daily lives and it gives us insight into the nature of our relationships. The Caribbean region in general has been victim to misrepresentation stemming from our historical process. I believe if we are to move forward, representation needs to originate from a desire to learn and then develop into a craving to tell. The images we put forth should be enlaced with the vibrancy and intricacy of our country. We can't afford to be shallow. We need to accept the challenge of writing and showing and expressing with creativity with a most culturally conscious mindset. Aside from the dictionary definitions, right, of in terms of the collection of modes, beliefs, and practices that sort of define a people, culture for me is something more visceral, right? It's something that you feel, it's not just something that you do. If we were to want a consensus about it, it's uh, the sum total of the way that we are, the way that we behave, the way that we think, everything that we are in the world comprises our culture. Yeah, that's our contemporary understanding of the term. You attack it with a sort of philosophical sort of approach, but the idea is that the viscerality of uh, cultural consciousness is literally that, right? When we think about cultural consciousness, it's not even uh, a misinterpretation or a contradiction in terms, because culture is consciousness. You see, culture is the performance of a collective consciousness. Literature provides that kind of flexibility wherein, of course, you're writing and you're doing somewhat definitional work in the, in the creation of plot, in the creation of characters, etc. But you're also using the imagination, so you see fiction then gives you space to play, gives you space to move, right? And the space that you get enables that culture to coalesce, to take shape, to take form, to maybe break down, to, te to test itself against itself, right? Well, I think that um, literature has been the place where the nation has been most strongly defined. So we can name a few arenas where that definition has been going on. We can talk about um, music, we can talk about the other arts, and we can talk about within the realm of politics and the kind of stage that happens within our political arena that attempts to do the same thing. But I think that within the field of literature, the definition has been strongest, perhaps because of the nature of literature. You know, it's a matter of somebody reflecting deeply about all of the things that have been said in all of the various media, in all of the various art, arts, and then trying to make a statement with regard to the individual in the midst of that. So the, the opportunity that you have to create is indicative of your desire to create for us. 
is that reflective then of how you sort of need to create something if there is nothing there if there is nothing there then that begs the question where are you coming from what is there that you need to create and why is there nothing there that you need to do the creating in right so that entire impulse to do creative work and i say literature as one example but for photographic work right is also another thing the way we look at light becomes then an opportunity for us to interrogate how the creation and the impulse to create are also reflections of culture. So literature, as I was telling my students, becomes kind of a, a, a working ground, a playground, or even sort of like a laboratory for the exploration of culture through language. Right? The idea of a Trinidad as a post-colonial universe is predicated solely upon its relationship to the to the metropole solely upon its relationship to empire right now i don't know how much that has changed although we might say it's not post-colonial it's neo-colonial right so we have these new words that we get to to describe some sometimes the same thing the same dynamics right the same relationships that people have to power powerlessness right? but you look at the work of let's say crr james C.R.R. James is doing work that, yes, he looks at Beyond the Boundary as a metaphor for cricket. Remember, I was talking about literature as a way to construct, deconstruct worlds to make and unmake things. He's looking at cricket and Beyond the Boundary, and he's looking at it as a metaphor to some, a metaphor for how empire functions and our place within empire. And that's a mighty hit by Clyde Lloyd. Picked it up and it sailed high and just over the boundary. The crowd signaling six, and that is a six. It's a mighty hit by Clyde Lloyd. Right, so of course the cricket pitch and the cricket grounds becomes the Caribbean. The way we play becomes the way we live, represents the way we live, represents the way we speak and the way we talk. The way we do what we just do, but also the way we operate and negotiate and navigate within those dynamics. Because of the long history of a romanticized and fantastical representation of us, so that who we have been portrayed as during the colonial period and even today by the an industry geared towards the tourists means that we are constantly battling to represent a, a more pertinent and relevant image of ourselves. So you see that and that, that metaphoric uh, representation is just one level. For us, as the post-colonial people being represented, it's not metaphoric, you see. We don't have the luxury of being metaphors. We don't have the luxury of being symbols or seeing ourselves as symbols, right? The idea is that we are the, the, the living embodiments of a consequence, of a particular historical consequence. So of a series of moments. So you have all of these different motions and these flows of people coming into the Caribbean that create Trinidad as a colony, that lead to Trinidad as a so-called post-colony, post-independence, whatever that means, right? Because it begs the question, what are we independent of? Right? And you just look around and you ask yourselves, well, what are we still dependent on? I've had a particular historical experience we have ongoing consequences in relation to those experiences and we need to be aware of it uh, so that you find that when the critic is looking at the um, the what the writers have done you find terms like um, Paula Morgan and Valerie Yusuf gave to their name writing rage because it's a matter of a, like an embedded rage because of our historical experiences with uh, colonialism, with being dislocated from previous homelands, being set adrift, trying to find a way, and the rage associated with that, which comes out in a variety of uh, different ways in terms particularly of our everyday violence.
four murders overnight pushed the murder toll to 34 as seven people are killed on Thursday. Five of those murders took place in the troublesome Northern Division as two close friends were killed last evening in Karapo. Ian Wayson has more. Died how they lived together. Damien Daniel and Clinton Andes, also known as Clint Alexander. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service says the overall reports on serious crimes in 2016 is roughly the same as compared to 2015, despite the 10% increase in murders. Speaking at the weekly media briefing, Public Information Officer of the TTPS, ESP Michael Pear, shared the preliminary report on serious crime in 2016 when compared to 2015 of murders for 2015 as opposed to 462 for 2016 which realized a 10% increase. How important is it for people who don't have a clear sense of themselves to actually have a world created and to participate in the creation of that world? We look at authors and we say well you know the importance of this work is not just in terms of career in terms of nation building, we're thinking about what is such a thing as nation? How do we build nation? Right? Is this a conversation that empire has had to have in terms of empire building and was it done with literature? Right? Literature then becomes not only this tool, this instrument for building, it becomes a space in which we interrogate really what is the nature of nation? Right? Who are we as a people? If we don't know ourselves as a people, then nation building becomes moot. You know, being positioned in an increasingly globalized world where unless one has a sense of oneself and a sense of what is important to, to use our old-fashioned term, our good life, um, we, we're going to have more and more of what we're seeing today in terms of uh, youth, boredom, apathy, uh, violence. We're going to see more of all of the things that are of concern to people who are worried about where, what the future holds, what the next 10 years will hold. The, the fact that um, people don't know what direction to take with their lives and in that regard literary and artistic representations would go a long way towards providing images that could offset that kind of um, affective malaise it's a kind of you know it's a kind of not knowing a kind of apathy a kind of um, like people have given up because you don't know how to deal with the future, how to deal with the problems that confront us. Power, control, you see. If you teach people to be inferior by whatever method, then their inferiority is pretty much confirmed, you see, right? Believing it makes it so, right? It is assured that they will act in inferior ways, that their intellect will be considered inferior if they engage in intellectual activity, you see, because having believed or having been made to believe that they are inferior, they would be unlikely to do work that is on par with what their actual capabilities are. Inferiority is written into the DNA of our culture because it means, where do you come from? Well, I come from oppression. Well, I was oppressed. Why was I oppressed? Why were, why were my people oppressed? To think of inferiority presumes an existing superiority. So the idea is that you, you, you have this kind of inferiority complex partly because you have to engage with what we have been trained to see as superior. 
even if we reject that superiority. That rejection is still an engagement, and that engagement is still a kind of presumption of the existence of that superiority. right from where you are, but the way in which you engage with the work has to matter, right? You engage honestly. You engage not in a search for authenticity even, but rather with a kind of willingness to accurately as possible represent what you see and to tell stories that can represent or at the very least don't misrepresent what you observe. Because we know we're working just as we're working within literature, we're working within particular boundaries, we're working within particular disciplines, right? That means that as far as we may want to go, and as much as we, we may want to undermine and subvert and sort of like shift boundaries, we're still working within this broad thing called literature, right? So the author has a particular job to do, as does the audience, as does the characters that are created, the setting and all of that. Every single element has work to do. I'm here to seek, to be edified, and to thus represent to the best of my ability the culture in which I have been exposed to. Make us question how we are living and what the meaning of living is or should be. Writers don't 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 write out of fullness. You know, they write from a lack of it. You see. Writers write because, not because we have so much to tell the world, but because we believe there's so much that we think we can see that we don't know about, you see? So you write, you craft, you work, and you have to do it tirelessly. There's no notion of culture that doesn't emerge from the people. So your responsibility to culture to, to, to aspects of culture, to aspects of cultural representation, is first and foremost with yourselves, with the people that you write about, that you're writing to, that you're writing for. Get on down